Hey, welcome to take two of this video. Yeah, it shut off and started recording uh, anew after 20 minutes. I don't know, maybe it's a setting or something. I don't know. But this has to do with Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, this video and all of a sudden it just got really dark outside. What the fuck? Anyway, we're just going to have to go with it. Maybe not. Hold on. Welcome to my bedroom where there's shit lighting. So I'm going to do on this video days uh, one through three because I think that will take up more than 20 minutes and hopefully my camera doesn't start um, fuck, uh, switching over and all that fun shit like it did when the last one. Um, so day one was what tarot goodies did you get for the holidays? My family doesn't buy me any of that crap because they probably wouldn't know what to get anyway. But one thing that did finally come, it was my first Kickstarter, so excited, was the Spacious Tarot. So I'm calling it a Christmas present. Thank you very much. It's by Carrie Mallon and Annie. Sorry, I don't want to butcher your name. But there you go. Because I will. The Kickstarter came with a uh, tarot bag and some stickers and yeah it's been hard to make videos lately anyway the one thing I like about this deck here's the backs um, it's not really standard size it's a little bit smaller um, there's no people and the way the cards are set up it's almost as if it puts you in the center of everything and so I'm really looking forward to working with this in 2020. And if you look, this is the High Priestess card, see? That's a little moon in there. I thought it was a pearl. I just figured that out today. Uh, the selling points for this deck for me were the Hierophant and the Justice card. Let me try and act like I'm sort of with it. Ta -da. The ripple effect. I really love that. But this was the closest thing I got to a Christmas present that was tarot related, so I'm calling it that. I was extremely excited to get it. Super happy. Um, haven't been really that happy before about a deck. I was like, yay! So, next up was day two. Top five tarot decks of 2019. Now, while most of these I did get in 2019, that's not the reason. They were ones that either surprised me um, when I got them and I've worked with them and I enjoy working with them. So first up, I'll just do it this way. The Trip and Wait. Not a fan of the Rider Wait. I do not like Pixie's art. Sorry so much about that. Uh, I am waiting on the Groovy Wait. And the reason I love this version is because it's psychedelic. These colors just make me happy. That's just the way it is. Um, I enjoy looking at it. And if I enjoy looking at it, I will enjoy reading with it. And I do enjoy reading with it. So it was one of those that I pulled out a lot. It's probably my favorite writer, Waite Smith. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on the uh, groovy tear or the groovy weight and see what that one looks like. Uh, I've seen pictures and it's going to be borderless. So that's pretty cool. Another one that, and I've said this before that I love, is the Druidcraft, very earthy deck. Um, like I said, it kind of spoke to the Taurus in me and it just read beautifully. It flowed so well. Um, absolutely enjoyed it love this four swords that's that's truly contemplation right there it's like you're giving your mind a little bit of a rest and just trying to reevaluate another one that I used in 2019 that I really enjoyed is the Sun and Moon Tarot by Vanessa DeCourt I have the tin version and the reason I have the tin version is because, here's the backs, the borders are black. 
the standard version has white borders. I'm sure you can cut those off, but this is a Thoth based deck, but what's unique about it and why I've enjoyed all the readings I've done with it is the fact that it's very balanced. Meaning for me, what that means is it can do very deep readings. It can do very, you know, lighthearted readings. It brings this message to you in a way where it's not like being slapped around. It's not being, you know, harsh or anything like that. It's, it delivers the message the same way, kind of in a very neutral tone, very balanced. I do love this little deck and I'm going to be trying to study the Thoth more so I can better understand that deck. Now, another one, which is my top five I can't live without is the Wild Unknown. Now, this one always gets, comes out when I need to hear the harsh truth because that's what this deck does. It pulls no punches. It tells you how it is and you just accept it. And I think that's why a lot of people have a difficulty with this deck. Um, besides the imagery, um, is the fact that it is quite harsh, but I think the best way to read it is if you again, have a general understanding of the cards, um, use the image, and the animals in it to kind of fill in the blanks, basically, for your reading. That's what I do. And I get very clear readings, very, um, this is the truth, deal with it, accept it. But it's a deck that, you know, even now, I'm not a fan of the art. I don't know if I ever will be a fan of the art, but it's a wonderful deck to work with. And it's one of my tops. Um, it would be one of my tops for the decade as well, but it's one of those that I, you know, work with a lot within 2019. Another one, I think that's, let's see, count one, two, three. Okay. Another one I'm counting, sorry. And I'm trying to do this really quickly. And damn it, the kitten's back in my room. Yes, I love you, but you're a pain in my ass. Did you know that? Don't get up on my desk. That's what she was doing in the last video. And tearing up my bunny rabbit. Uh, not a real bunny rabbit, it's a stuffed rabbit. I collect them. Now this is one, it's uh, the Bonefire Tarot by Gabby Angus West. I have to look at the name. Again, not a fan of the art, but like The Wild Unknown, it popped up, it, I knew about the deck, of course, you know, um, but I never wanted it. And all of a sudden, it kind of just invaded my thoughts and couldn't figure out why. And with this deck, I wasn't even sure when I finally bought it, what I was gonna do with it, because I don't like it. But let me tell you something about this deck. The Bonefire, it reads very intuitively and that's what I have done with it. I use it to connect with spirit guides. Um, I have problems with court cards, but not in this deck because if you have a general, again, a general understanding of the meanings of the cards, you let the images then speak to you and they will speak to your intuition and you will, again, fill in the blanks and you will get a very good reading with it. Um, but, you know, not a fan of the art, but but that's what one of the things. When a deck does call to you, whether you like the art or not, you know, it's something to examine. It's something to, sorry, um, you should probably look at and try and figure out why, because that's what's important. <clears throat> now, for day three, and again, I'm trying to do this fast because I don't want my camera to shut off after 20 minutes. Um, your top five oracles of 2019. Again, these are not based on when I got them. They're the ones I've read with. They're the ones that matter the most to me. And one of those is the Spirit de la Lune. This is the one I pull out for... Uh, 
full moon and new moon tarot spreads. Um, they're round cards. They have different moon phases and they also have uh, the zodiac. Oh, there's Taurus. Yay. Um, I just dropped a card. I'll have to get that. But this one I use with the Wild Unknown a lot uh, for my moon readings. And Joy, if you eat that card, I swear to God. She's jumping on everything right now. Um, it always complements a reading very well. I'm sorry, my nose is so itchy. Um, it complements a reading extremely well and it gives you better insight into your reading and it goes really well with tarot. So that's why I enjoy it and that's why I work with it so much. Another one um, I enjoy and actually I'm going to be working with this month is um, the Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. And with this one, it's it comes off as gentle, but it gives you deep messages. And that's what's important. Because sometimes, you know, again, you don't want to be bitch slapped like you get with like the wild unknown. Um, but you need you need to hear the truth and you will get um, good messages with this deck. So where's my all my decks go? Uh, my favorite Oracle and I will pro it's probably would make the list every single year. And that is the Whispers of Lord Ganesha by Angela ha Hartfield. Here's the backs. It's also one of the cards, by the way. The unique thing about this deck is it's really spiritual. So everything comes from a place of your connection to spirit and the universe. And it goes from there. And that's what I really love. Again, it's always spot on. Um, I mean, I don't know. I can't, you know, praise it enough. I just really love this deck. It's going to pull my bunny down. And, you know, but I don't mind approaching the deck. Sometimes you get these decks and you kind of like, oh, I don't really don't want to get a message from you right now. But that's one where you can always get a good message. Another one that I use all the time, all the time, is the Power of Surrender cards by Judith Orloff. And what these do, again, there's no booklet to it. Here's the backs. They give you something to surrender to or basically give up like this one surrender comparison to other people and it gives you a quote at the bottom to kind of meditate and work with and I use this for like weekly readings to kind of give me an idea of uh, what to work on during the week and it really knows you um, I'm a people pleaser this deck knows that and it throws that card surrender people pleasing at me all the time and one that I was getting a lot recently was surrender your ego <laughs> you know but you have things like surrender to joy and it's just a really wonderful deck to kind of just help you through the week and kind of give you a message to work with and finally I'm at 13 14 minutes I don't know why my camera shut off. Um, I do love Colette Byrne read uh, decks, but this is probably my favorite. And it's the one I worked with the most and it's the Enchanted Map Oracle cards. I mean, I thought I would really love the um, Wisdom of Avalon and they're beautiful, but uh, this one it's simple, but it gives you a powerful message. And you may get a card and think, I don't know what the hell you mean. I don't know why you're getting that. And all of a sudden something will happen and it basically had told you, this is something you should have done. This is something you should be doing. It's always spot on in a reading. So, 
those are my top Oracle decks of 2019. And so I'm going to probably stop here, make another video. I'm going to do the uh, challenge in chunks. Sorry, I'm just really freaked out that my camera's going to turn off. But anyway, so that was days one through three. My little Christmas present to myself, plus my top Oracle and uh, tarot decks of 2019. Thanks for watching, and sorry this video kind of sucks, but eh, they'll get better, I promise.